Hey guys welcome back to our channel, so how you doing hope you all doing great. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto neglected for his sister, alive Kishina and Minato, this is part 1 and. This will be short series so if you want part 2 of this, then please make sure to subscribe and leave a like that will be super duper awesome. Let's get in the video. Dusan, daddy. Tusan. I did it. Did you see that? Did you? Cheered a girl who looked 8 years old. She had bright long red hair with yellow around the end of her hair, bright ocean blue eyes, and had a round face. She was about 3-1, sorry don't really know how tall 8 year old are. She wore a red t-shirt and combat pants. That was great Narumi-chan. Appalled a man with spiky blonde hair with two long bangs down the side of the face. He had ocean blue eyes and an angular face. He was more handsome than most males. He wore a dark blue long sleeve shirt and black sweepants. Stood about a height of 5'10 this man was Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage of Kanahagakur, and the yellow flash of Konoha. At the moment Minato was watching his daughter train. The girl now known as Narumi, was the daughter of both Minato Namikaze and Kishina Yuzumaki Namikaze. She looked like an exact copy of her mother, with the exception of her blue eyes, and the yellow strands that outline her hair, and the fact that she is younger. Narumi smiled and continued her training on sensing her chakra and calling it out. She just started training with Chakra, and her dad was teaching her how to control it. Great job Narumi-chan, you will be a great Kinoichi in no time. Said Aridid who just came in when she saw her daughter call out her Chakra. She stood at a height of 5'8", had maroon hair, and a heart-shaped angelic face. She wore a hair clip on her hair, wore a red t-shirt and sweepants. She had a body of a goddess that would make any male or female die of a nosebleed. With long slender arms and legs, and an impressive bust ranging from C cups to D cups. This woman was Kashina Yuzumaki Namikaze, wife of Minato Namikaze and Kanoha's Red Death. Thanks mom. I can't wait until I become a great Kanoichi like you. Replied Narumi with a smile. Both Minato and Kashina smiled at their child energy and attitude. In the distance stood a boy who was the same age as Narumi. He had wild spiky blonde hair that went everywhere, electric blue eyes, and a round face. He stood about the height of 3'5", and at the moment was wearing a grey t-shirt and sweepants. He looked like any normal healthy kid, but one thing different about him was the three whisker marks on each side of his face. His name is Naruto Namikaze son of Minato Namikaze and Kishina Yuzumaki Namikaze, an older twin brother of Narumi Namikaze. At the moment Naruto was glaring at the nice family scene that was happening at the family private training area. Naruto just sighed and walked away, into his room where he did training of his own. When Naruto got into his room he laid down on his bed and remembered what happened a long time ago that made him to be what he is now. Flashback three years ago. Hey Tusan can you teach me how to do some cool ninja stuff? Ask a young blonde Naruto who was hoping his dad would say yes. Sorry Naruto I can't. I have to teach Narumi. Replied Minato, Naruto frowned. Why can't you teach both of us at the same time? Argue Naruto ignoring the smug look his sister was giving him. Sorry Naruto I don't have time to do that. Naruto was going to respond with his father until his mother came in. Naruto go to your room and don't bother your father. He will teach you when he feels that you are ready. Said Kishina in a demanding voice. Naruto not wanting to argue with his mother looked at the ground and walked to his room. Why can't I learn how to be a shinobi, but Narumi can. How come she gets everything? Said Naruto out loud to himself when he reached his room and closed the door so no one could enter or hear him. Naruto was considered a genius or prodigy, he was smart beyond measure and had skills to learn anything really fast, so it didn't take him long enough to figure out that his family favored his sister more than him, seeing as she got mostly everything she wanted. He also noticed the villagers treating her like a hero. Naruto on the other hand barely got anything he wanted, even on his birthday he would get one or two gifts, while Narumi would have tons. He was also hated by the villagers. Sometimes when he would walk around the village alone he could see some of the villagers giving him cold glares. His sister also had a lot of friends, every kid would try to get to know her. While he didn't have any friends, kids would avoid talking to him for reasons he doesn't know. Naruto knew that his sister had the QB's power in her and that she was seen as a hero, but he didn't understand why he was so hated by the villagers. He lay on his bed and closed his eyes so that he could some rest. Mindscape. Naruto suddenly woke up to see that he was in a sewer and in front of him was a giant gate with a seal on it. He didn't know where he was so he called hey. Anyone there? His response was a giant roar from the other side of the gate, which scared him greatly. Who dares disturb my slumber? Roared a giant beast, which Naruto could make out was a fox with red fur and nine tails. Naruto just stood there too shocked and scared to say anything. The fox looked down and saw Naruto and started to chuckle. So my jailer finally graced me with his presence. Said the fox. Naruto got out of his shocked and looked at the fox confused written over his face. Jailer? And who are you and where am I? 
asked Naruto. Yes you are my jailer, and to answer your question I am the great QP and we are in your mindscape. Replied the fox now known as QP Naruto eyes widened and shocked, the QP sealed inside him. He heard stories of the QP, but didn't really pay attention because he was too small and didn't go to school yet. Why why you're the QP? Stuttered Naruto, who shakily pointing at the giant fox. The Kyubi nodded its head. Are you going to kill me? The QP shook its head and looked at Naruto. No I won't kid, I saw your memories, and I must say that your parents and the villagers are idiots. Said the QB, and Naruto was confused, so he slightly turned his head, showing that he was confused. The QB saw it and continued. Your father, who did the sealing, sealed my powers in your sister, believing that she could control my powers, while he sealed my soul into you. Also because of this he is still alive for using the Shinigami to seal me, seeing that Shinigami didn't seal all of me into one person, but split me up and sealed me into two babies. But in return he probably lost about half his lifetime making him die early, than he is supposed to. Naruto nodded showing that he understood and is taking the information in slowly. Your father is training your sister early, so that she can control my powers, which is like impossible without the soul being me, because of the pure hatred and destruction that it contains. Naruto eyes widened a bit and then laughed at how his father made a stupid mistake. After taking a deep breath the QB continued, many people died during the QB attack, many people lost family members, friends, brothers and sisters. Somehow the villagers know that you have the QB soul sealed into you and hate you for it, seeing as it reminds them of the people they lost. They think that you are the QB and that is why they hate you. Naruto nodded sadly understanding what the QB was saying and looked at the ground sadly think that the villagers were right about him being the QB. The Kyubi saw this and said Naruto don't think that you are the QB because you aren't, you are you, and I can't influence you in any way remember that. And just for your information I am not a bloodthirsty demon who just random kill for fun. Then why did you attack Konoha? The QB flinched a little and was then sad. I was controlled. Controlled by who? Ichiha Madara. Who's that? He is the founder of the Ichiha clan. Naruto nodded then realization came to him. Wouldn't that make him more than a hundred years old? The QB nodded. Yes but because of the ethernal Manjiku Sharingan he is immortal and also used his Sharingan to trap me in a Jinjutsu to control me. Naruto only nodded since this was a lot to take in for a guy his age. At the same time he was thinking. He suddenly came to a conclusion and looked the QB with determination in his eyes. I will beat this Ichiha Madara guy for you. Yelled Naruto shocking the QB. You seriously think you can beat him? Asked the QB still shocked. Yeah. Only if you train me. The QB looked into his eyes and saw the determination he had and smiled. Fine then kid, but it won't be easy. Naruto smiled. Wouldn't ask for any other way. With that his mindscape started to grow faint. What happening? Asked Naruto confused. You're waking up from your nap. I will open a link where we can talk without you always going into your mindscape. Naruto nodded happy to know he didn't have to be asleep or knocked out to talk to his new sensei. Oh before I forget can you change your mindscape to something more comfortable since sewers isn't that nice. Sure thing QB sensei. One more thing QB is just a title, my real name is Yoko. With that Naruto faded out of his mindscape and woke up still in the same position on the bed. Then flashback. Throughout the years he has and still has been training very hard every day. Every day he would train himself until he was exhausted and couldn't move. He would usually train in his room or in a secret training area where he wouldn't be caught. Since he was a kid he couldn't lift weight or else it would stun his growth, so Yoko, Kayubi, gave him a routine he would have to do every day. He mostly worked on his endurance and doing workouts like push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and crunches. He also would work on his chakra control, since he had a really large chakra reserve being at the moment high gen into low chunin. His routine every day would be 100 push-ups followed by 100 crunches. This would usually take about an hour or so then he would usually take short break and to 100 pull-ups and sit-ups, this took about another hour. After he would run around the village three times, which took about two hours, and spend three hours doing chakra control. He would do this every day and wouldn't cheat or take any shortcuts. When he first began his training he started doing 20 of each, then as time came by he started to do more and more. Eventually he came to where he is now, doing 100 of each. Eventually he was interested in seals and started to read about Fuinjutsu, he guessed it ran in the family, seeing as his father and mother were seals masters. He read how to do simple seals like the storage seal. He figured out how to make a simple storage seal from scratch, but during his study, he came across one seal that caught his attention. It was the gravity seal, it was a seal, which applies extra gravity on you making it harder for you to move, but when released you become faster and stronger. Naruto knew the gravity seal would help him greatly with his training, so with the help of Yoko, he figured out how it worked and applied it to himself. 
Also during his training Yoko told him to go to the library to read some books on jutsu or scroll he may find. He did as he was told but couldn't find much, so Yoko told him to sneak into the Hokage's library and find a scroll that said forbidden move. Naruto did what he was told and surprisingly he actually got in. Yoko then told him to find a jutsu called Kage Bushin, no Jutsu Shadow Clone Jutsu, and for him to know the hand seals and how to do it. It didn't take him long to find it seeing as it was the first thing on the list. After an hour or so of reading he figured out how to do it and put the scroll back where he found it and went back to practice what he learned. When he mastered the Kage Bushin, told him the secret of the Kage Bushin, how when a clone does something when it dispels it sends all its information and experience to the real person. Naruto was surprised with Kage Bushin he could even do training and learn more making him even stronger. With many good things there are also bad things. As time passed by the villagers at first started with cold glares, then changed into beating here and there. Once every two weeks or so there would be a crowd that would corner Naruto and beat him senseless. They didn't do anything crazy since he was the son of their beloved Yandame, but they would show him his place. Naruto at first would fight back, but he realized that would have made it worse, so now he just lets them beat them, though it didn't really hurt since he was strong and could take weak civilians' punches. The children around Naruto's ago wouldn't hang out or talk to him, instead they would full flaunt over Narumi or give him cold glares. Some of the people who tried to be his friend only did it so that they could get clothes of Narumi. During the academy he would be ignored, but Naruto didn't really mind since he was pretty much alone from the start. Though there were very people that befriended him. Them being Kurana Yuhi, Anko Midarashi, Yugao Yuzuki, Ichiha Itachi, and finally Ichiha Mikoto. Kurunai, Anko, and Yugao helped Naruto one time when the villagers beat him, after that they became friends, but at time he would stay a safe distance away from them so that the villagers wouldn't hurt them too. Itachi found him during one of his training routine and watched in silence. He was impressed by Naruto's determination and hard work and eventually talked to Naruto. He asked why Naruto was training by himself and where his family was. Naruto's answer was I am nothing to them, only extra baggage. Itachi was shocked but understood what he meant, he often seen Naruto walking behind his parents with an expressionless face. After that Itachi often visited Naruto as much as he could and helped Naruto with his training, seeing as Naruto was considered a prodigy like himself. Ichiha Mikoto found Naruto walking alone around Konoha one day. She asked why he wasn't with his parents, where he gave them the same answer as Itachi. Mikoto was furious and was about to march over to the Namika's estate and give them a piece of her mind. Naruto tried to stop her saying it wouldn't matter, but she didn't listen to him instead she dragged him with her to the Namika's estate. He still remembered what happened. Flashback one year ago. Ichiha Mikoto barged into the Namika's estate dragging a blonde hair boy with her. Kashina Namika's. Come here now. Yelled an enraged Mikoto. Moments later Kashina and Minato came into the front of the door to find Mikoto holding their son. Mikoto why are you here and why is my son with you? Asked a confused Kashina, she thought that Naruto was in his room. I'm here because I found your son walking around Konoha alone. Replied Mikoto loudly. Really? Oh. Thanks Mikoto-chan for finding my son we will take it from here. Said Minato telling Naruto to go to his room, which he did. Though stayed back so he can hear the rest of the conversation since he noticed that Mikoto haven't went home yet. Did you even know that your son was outside? Asked Mikoto still mad. No, but I thank you again for finding him. Replied Kashina. Mikoto narrowed her eyes and in the corner of her eyes, she noticed a red head that was training in the family training ground. This got a question that she wanted to ask them. Why is Narumi training to be a ninja early while Naruto is sent to his room? We decided to train Narumi early. And why not Naruto? Mikoto's tone getting colder and colder by the second, which was starting to scare Kashina and Minato. That's because Narumi has the Kyuubi's power sealed into her and has to know how to control it, we will start teaching Naruto when he get into the academy. Mikoto stood there with glaring eyes at the two. I understand sorry for asking a stupid question Namika-san. Minato and Kashina flinch at the sudden change in their friend, but just toss it aside, thinking that it wasn't anything serious. Mikoto turned around and walked away too mad to say goodbye. Flashback end. After that Mikoto would help him as best as she could. Sometimes cooking him lunch to giving him advice on his training, since she herself was a jonin before she retired when she got married and had two kids. She tried befriending him with her youngest son Sasuke, but to her disappointment he adopted his father personality at a very early age, which was being arrogant to the max. Sasuke would say things like, Naruto wasn't worth his time, or that the Ichiha are the best to Naruto's annoyance. But at least Itachi befriended him, which made Mikoto happy though she wished he had a friend his age, which Naruto didn't mind. His relation with his family became worse. As his parents train his sister Narumi in the family styles and jutsu, Naruto watch in the background always hoping for attention. 
He would suggest the family go the movie, while his sister would suggest they go and eat ramen, and to Naruto's disappointment, they always chose whatever Narumi would suggest. After a while of watching and hoping he gave up and trained even harder to show them that he didn't need them. He stayed in his room not bothered to go out and talk with his family. Only time he saw them during the day would be dinner, but even then he would stay silent, he would just finish his food as fast as he could, wash his own dishes and go back to his room and train. When the family went on walks around the village he would stay a few feet back from the rest of the family, while Narumi would usually lead. He avoided attention as much as possible being quiet or staying in corners where no one would see him. During parties he would only be there for an hour or so until he got tired and left. Sometimes Narumi would ask him to play with her, but Naruto would turn her down and said that he was busy. On his free time, Naruto would usually read books about stories, jutsu, seals, or anything ninja-related. He also painted and drew on his free time. When his parents weren't around he would work on improving his funijutsu, hoping that he would surpass his parents since they were seal master. Naruto got up and started to do his daily workout. He took a short break, walked to his desk and took out a sheet of paper with things written all over it. Do you think this will work Yoko-chan? Don't know until we try but I'm pretty sure it will. Replied Yoko. After the meeting with Yoko the first time, Yoko opened a link for them to talk telepathically so that he wouldn't have to always go to his mindscape. Since then he always talked to Yoko, to him Yoko was his mother friend, he would tell her things that are happening. In return Yoko would teach him anything from jutsu to reading and writing. Yoko also gave helped him with his training. As time went by their bond grew and grew. One day Yoko told him to go into his mindscape and said that there was a surprise waiting for him. Flashback two years ago. Naruto entered his mindscape and saw a giant field of grass. He looked around and saw a giant few fox and started to walk up to it. So what's the surprise Yoko-sensei? Asked Naruto wanting to know what the great surprise was. Yoko looked down at him and smirked. Then suddenly to Naruto's shock a bright white light surrounded Yoko and he noticed the light was shrinking, had a form of human or something like that. When the light disappeared his body shot back because he suddenly got a massive bloody nose. In front of him was what could be said as a goddess-made human. Yoko had crimson hair and blood-red slit eyes. Had perfectly heart-shaped face and two crimson fox ears, making her even more adorable and sexy. Her body was that of a goddess, with a perfect hergless figure, long slender arms and legs, and an impressive bust ranging from D cup to DT cups. She stood about a height of 5'10 and had a tan skin. Above her butt were nine crimson tails. Naruto got back up, but shortly after shot back with another bloody nose leaking out more than before. Why? Because when he got back up and looked at her he saw her in all her naked glory. With nothing to cover her showing everything to him. He may be a kid, but he was a genius, so he knew some stuff at an early age. Yoko smirked when he got his second bloody nose. Naruto got back up once more to still see her naked, but instead of getting another bloody nose, he covered his eyes and shouted put on some clothes. Yoko pouted but reluctantly put some clothes on. She wore a crimson kimono with flower petals. After she said she was done, Naruto opened his eyes. So Naruto-kun did you like what you see? Asked Yoko with a smile on her face. Naruto only nodded still dazed from seeing such a sight. He quickly shook his head to get away from his thought at the moment. Truthfully when Yoko told Naruto her name he figured out that she was a girl, but didn't think the demons would have human form. Also didn't think that it would be that hot. I didn't know you had a human form. Said a slightly till dazed Naruto. Yoko giggled a little and replied course I do, how did you think I walked around the human world without causing suspicion? Naruto only nodded. Anyways if that all you wanted to show me then I'll be leaving then. Said Naruto turning around to leave. Yoko pout, oh Naruto-kun you're such a killjoy only for Naruto to smile, but Yoko didn't see it because his head was turned so she couldn't see her face. I Yoko-chan Yoko face grew a little red with the suffix, too bad Naruto couldn't see it. I Naruto-kun. And flashback. I guess it's back to training. Naruto told himself, he put the paper back into his original place and continue his training routines. After Naruto finished his daily training routine, took a quick shower and changed into his nightgown. After he went to the restroom to brush his teeth. After he was done he climbed into his bed and took out a calendar book. In two days will be mine's and Narumi's birthday. Said Naruto looking at the date that said October 10. Minato Namakas was doing paperwork, something he hated to do as Hokage. He was currently looking at a paper that said to release the civilians that were in jail for hurting his son Naruto. He sighed after he QB attack and when he announced that Narumi had the QB power and Naruto had the soul, the some of the villagers asked that Naruto be watched, hurt, or killed before the QB could control Naruto. As a father he knew that he shouldn't let them go, but he was the Hokage not just any Hokage, but the best Hokage ever to produce so far. As Hokage he knew that the village came first and family came later. 
He knew the pain of the village after the QB attack, and with Naruto having the soul of the QB. He knew that the village would target him. He knew it was bad, but the village needed a scapegoat, and Naruto was the only person to fit the job. The best he could do is reduce what they did to him. He signed the paper that releases the villagers from their prison. He just hoped that Naruto was easy for giving, and his wife and daughter doesn't find out about what he allowed the village to do to Naruto. He was about to go through more paperwork until he felt a presence behind him. Hiraya what are you doing here? Asked Minato while he was approving the request. It seems like I could never hide from you. Said Jiraiya. I ask you again why are you here? I assumed you were peeping on women like you always do. Actually the toad summoned me and told me about a prophecy. Prophecy from the toads? Asked Minato shocked. Jiraiya nodded in confirmation. What was it about? It said that the chosen one is the child born from two great shinobi and holds great power. I expect that the chosen one would be Narumi since she is your child and has the power of the QP within herself. Minato nodded slowly, then realization came him and he smiled. So my daughter is the chosen one? Asked a happy hopeful Naruto. I think so, since she fits all the requirement. Replied Jiraiya, he saw how happy his student is and what he was going to tell him would make him even happier. Since it's Narumi's birthday is tomorrow, I was wondering if you would let me let her sign the toad contract. Jiraiya told Minato his smile growing wider. Minato nodded to Jiraiya and he smiled, another his next student would be another person from his favorite student's family. Since that done I guess I'll continue my research see you later Minato. Jiraiya disappeared using Shunshin, Minato sighed and looked at his loads of paperwork and frown. He still couldn't figure out a way to beat every Kage's enemy. After working for a while Minato stopped and started to think about his family. How far they have grown as a family. How happy they were he, Kishina, Narumi, and Naruto. He frowned when he thought about Naruto. After refusing to teach Naruto he pretty much excluded himself from the family. Minato still remember Naruto asking to go somewhere as in family, but he refused Naruto's idea for Narumi, picking wherever she wanted to go. As time went by Naruto's request became less frequent until eventually he stopped asking for anything. He even showed his face less around the house, always staying in his room, and during dinner time, he would be silent only looking at his food while he ate. The only time he really saw Naruto was when dinner time and while Naruto and Narumi were walking to the academy. Minato regretted what he did to Naruto and was going to make it up to him. Starting tomorrow after Naruto's and Narumi's birthday, he was going to start Naruto's training. He was going to bring Naruto back into the family no matter what. Namaka's estate. Ashina Namaka's at the moment was making dinner for the family. She too felt that Naruto wasn't part of the family. Every time he and Narumi would come home he goes into his room and stays there until dinner. At dinner he would be silent and not even give time a glance. When they walked around Konoha he would stay a few feet back and would remain quiet. She noticed Naruto always reading books, which was good, but he read too much and wouldn't go out and play with the children his age. She started to wonder if Nero had any friends at all. She regretted not training Naruto as the same time as Narumi, but believed that Narumi needed extra attention due to her having the QP's power. She being a former Jinchuriki knows how hard it is to control the QP's power. Ashina was worried, she didn't want Naruto to isolate himself from the family. She knew that something had to be done, and the moment Naruto walked through that door, she was going to make it up to him. She was going to make the family whole again no matter what it took. She then continues to cook dinner lunch for the family, and especially for Naruto to enjoy. In Konoha. Naruto Ani chan where are you? Shouted Narumi. Narumi ran around Konoha trying to look for her Ani chan after class finished Narumi wanted to walk home with Naruto. To her disappointment she disappeared when she tried to look for him. Naruto Ani chan She shouted once more, hoping Naruto would come this time. When she got nothing in return she frowned and started to walk home. Narumi loved Naruto a lot, maybe more than she should. She would always try to play with him, but Naruto always turned her down, saying he was busy. She wanted Naruto to feel like a family, not an outcast. During the academy she noticed he would always sleep in class. She also noticed that Naruto didn't talk to anyone in his class, nor the classmates try to talk him, since they were too busy trying to get her attention. Narumi tried to talk to him during school, but every time she tried she would be bombarded by her fan club, and when she finally got rid of them, Naruto was gone. Narumi started to remember the past and felt sick at herself. She remembered when she little after her dad told Naruto that he had to train her first, she started to tease Naruto about it. She would say things like the family loved her more, or how show Naruto what she learned to make fun of him. When Naruto would suggest they go somewhere, she would suggest they go another place, and every time they would choose her suggestion over his. Remembering these things made her just wanted to go back in time and slap her younger self. Narumi walked home alone, another day without Naruto. While she walked home she remembered that tomorrow was hers and Naruto's birthday. 
She smiled and thought of a plan to get her Ani Chan back. She finished her plan by the time she got home and was going to start at the moment she reached into the house. Namika's estate. Ashina was still cooking dinner, making their family's favorite food ramen. She heard the door open and turned to see who was at the door. She saw her husband Minato at the door taking of his shinobi shoes. Out of work early dear? Asked Kishina. Minato looked up to see his wife in an apron cooking dinner. He smiled and nodded yup. He told her and walked into the kitchen. When he got into the kitchen he gave his wife a kiss on the cheeks, after the kiss he saw that she had concern written on her face. What's wrong Kishina-chan? He asked. It's Naruto, I feel like he not part of the family anymore. Said Kishina sadly and she started to tear up. Minato hugged her and tried to cheer her up. It's okay Kishina-chan starting tomorrow after the birthday party I will be starting Naruto's training. Replied Minato trying to relax his wife. Kishina looked at Minato with a smile on her face. I bet he would love that. I know he will. Just then the door swung open and Narumi came barging in with determination in her eyes. Kasa make lots of ramen today. She yelled and went to her room to change. Kishina and Minato were a little shocked by their daughter's reaction, but she did get that from her mother. Wonder what gotten her all excited. Said Minato to himself. Maybe she feel the same way as us about Naruto. Answered Kishina, then she noticed that Naruto wasn't with Narumi, nor was he home. Hey, where is Naruto come? She asked wondering where her son could be at the moment. When Minato heard this he cringed a little knowing where he could be, this was unnoticed by Kishina. As if on cue Naruto came to the door with several bruise and cut marks on his arm and legs. He was slightly limping on his left leg. Kishina and Minato were in the kitchen so Naruto didn't notice them. Stupid villagers can't tell the difference between a jailer and the jailed. They think I'm going to destroy them since I have the soul. I don't even have the power, how can I destroy the village? Naruto mumbled quietly to himself and walked to his room as quickly as possible. Kishina were shocked to see their son was injured, while Minato frowned. Kishina quickly ran to Naruto with Minato following shortly behind her. Naruto. She shouted. Naruto turned around and to both Kishina and Minato looking at him. Yes. Was Naruto's reply. What happened to you? Asked a worried Kishina looking at his cut. Oh this I was climbing a tree and slip and fell down. I'm fine really. Kishina didn't want to leave Naruto alone, but guessing that Naruto is fine she let him go. If you're fine then clean up and get changed for dinner. Naruto nodded and walked back to his room. Inner came and Naruto came out of his room with a black t-shirt and black sweats. When he got to his spot on the table he felt like there were eyes on him. He looked up and to his surprise his family waiting for him with smile on their faces. Even Narumi seemed to be waiting for him, usually she would be attacking the food by now, especially when it's ramen. What the hell is going on here, he thought to himself. Maybe they finally noticed they have a son and a brother. Replied Yoko who saw what Naruto saw. We'll see about that. Naruto took out his chopsticks to eat his ramen. When he ate the first bite, the family started eating their ramen. This confused Naruto a lot just what was going on to make his family change. So Naruto how was your day? Asked Kishina who actually wanted to know her son's day. Naruto was shocked his family actually talked to him. He was a little happy that he was finally getting attention, but that was easily washed away with anger. So now they notice B after all this time. Whatever this changes nothing. But answer Naruto kun they don't deserve forgiveness, not right now at least. Naruto inwardly nodded to Yoko. Well since he was going to follow his plan, might as well give them a piece of his mind. Hi nothing special happened. Replied Naruto quickly going back to finish his food. Kashina frowned at the quick answer she received. Then Narumi jumped into the conversation. So Aniki what did you think of today's lesson? She asked. Nothing special. Replied Naruto quickly finishing his ramen. Narumi frowned at a quick answer, it felt like Naruto didn't even want to talk to them. Naruto finished his ramen and put his bowl into the sink and started to wash it. It's okay Naruto you don't have to wash the dish, I can wash it for you Naruto. Said Kishina. Naruto ignored what she said and started to wash his dish. It's okay I'm fine, I wouldn't want you to waste your time on me anyways I can take care of myself. Replied Naruto not bother to give his mother a glance. Kishina was shocked at her son's reply and started to get sad and water started to form in her eyes. Her son thought that he was like nothing in the family. She wiped the tears of her eyes, she was going to change that no matter what it took. By the time Naruto finished washing his dish the family just finished eating their ramen. Since they loved ramen they eat it pretty fast. Naruto quickly walked back to his room, but stopped when his father called him and told him to go to the living room for a meeting. Naruto inwardly groaned but went to the living room anyways and sat on the couch until his family came. When they finished washing the dishes and everything, they joined Naruto in the living room. Narumi sat next to Naruto, while Minato and Kishina sat across him. 
Now Naruto I have news for you that will make you happy. Said Minato. Naruto glared at him making him flinch a little before the continued. I happy to say that starting tomorrow after your birthday that you will be starting your training in the family arts. He said proudly. Does that mean Iniki will be practicing with me? Asked a hopeful Narumi. Minato nodded and Narumi's face glowed with happiness. Minato then looked at his son and was shocked. Naruto's face remained unchanging, his eyes looking at him with the same dead cold eyes he always has. Not a single sign that he was smiling or attempted to. Ashina too was shocked, she thought that this plan would work, she was sure it was going to work. Narumi saw the look on both her parent face and wonder what made both her parents shocked. She turned to look at Naruto and like her parents she too was shocked. Naruto on each and aren't you happy? Now we can train together. Asked a confused Narumi. Naruto looked at her with his cold eyes glaring at her. Not really he replied. Everyone frowned. Why not Naruto, don't you want to know mine's and your father fighting style? Asked Kishina helping to see signs that Naruto was reconsidering his answer. I lost interest after you guys refused to teach me when I asked. Minato and Kishina was shocked and they frowned, both in Amika's and Yuzumaki fighting style were strong. They didn't understand why their son wouldn't want to learn his family stuff and be extremely strong like them. They broke out of their thoughts when Naruto spoke again. I don't need training from either of you, since I didn't have one before why start now? I will wait until I become a genin and have a sensei that will train me to become a shinobi. Even then I will not train or learn any of your style. Said Naruto with anger in his voice. He got up and left leaving his shocked parents and sister where they are. What do we do now? Asked Atiri Kishina, after hearing what Naruto said she couldn't take it anymore and started to cry. I don't know anymore, maybe this was a little too much for him to take in for the day. Just give him time, I bet he would get over it. Replied Minato, trying to calm his wife. Truthfully he didn't know, since Naruto sounded really serious he could only hope that he was right. Why? Iniki why? Cried Atiri Narumi. Narumi was really hoping that Naruto would agree to train so that they could be together and she would have more time to talk to him. When he refused she heartbroken and started to cry. Naruto slammed the door behind him and checked his things he got ready for tomorrow. He was still mad from the conversation he had earlier with his family. Damn family. They notice me now and think that I would forgive them because I get to learn their fighting style. He mentally yelled at himself. Calm down Naruto kun it doesn't matter, you just need some sleep so that you can focus on the plan tomorrow said Yoko trying to calm Naruto down. What Naruto doesn't know is that Yoko liked Naruto and it hurt her to see him angry, especially what happened today. She herself was angry at his parents for noticing their son now, after almost nine years. Naruto needed to rest so that he can be focused on his plan for tomorrow. I understand Yoko-chan. Naruto finished packing his things and got to bed. Tomorrow is when we leave this dump called Konoha. After the conversation with Naruto, the Namaka's family was sad and deep in thought. Minato tried his best to cheer up Atiri Kishina and Narumi, who thought they lost their son brother. After an hour or so of crying it was late and they went to their room for some sleep for the big day tomorrow. In Kishina and Minato room, Kishina's face and eyes was still red and puffy from the crying, she went to the restroom to wash her face, while Minato tried his best to make sure she was fine. After they were both clean and finished with the night routine. They lay in bed together and fell asleep, both in their mind was how to make Naruto feel part of the family and for him to learn their family style though Kishina more than Minato. As for Narumi she continued to cry by herself in her room. After about 30 for minutes she finally got over it and went to her personal restroom to wash her face and her nightly routine. During that time she like her parents her determination grew and she will do everything she can to make it up to him. She jumped on her bed and pulled the cover over her letting sleep take hold for the night. Planning on ways to get her and Nikki back. Next morning. Naruto woke up feeling better than yesterday. He was still a mad about yesterday, but it didn't matter today was the day he going to go through with his plan. He walked over to his desk and pulled out a piece of paper that has his plan written out. The day is his and Narumi's birthday, also the anniversary of the QB's defeat. Since today is a special day for Konoha there is no school, since everyone is preparing for the festival. That's when he is going to escape, when everyone is drunk from the festival, plus Konoha security isn't so great. He was able to sneak into the Hokage office and copy the Kage Bushin, a forbidden jutsu. There was only one problem with his plan, and it was his family. Apparently they finally noticed him and are trying to get his forgiveness. It didn't matter since they would be too busy with the party for Narumi to notice him anyways. Naruto sighed and put the paper away in his pocket, went to the restroom and did his morning routine. Apparently both his parents and sister were still sleeping, so he quietly sneaked out and went to his secret training ground. It may be his birthday, but that doesn't mean he get a free day and relax from training. He left his home to go to his training ground. 
After an hour when Naruto left, Narumi woke up really happy since today was her and Naruto's birthday. She quickly got out of bed and ran to her parents' room. Gusan. Kasan wake up. It's mine's and Naruto's birthday. Shouted Narumi, jumping on her parent bed waking them up. Minato and Kashina groaned as they woke up. Narumi, calm down. Why don't you wake Naruto up and we can walk around the village and see the festival preparation and we will visit the clan heads and your friends. Replied Minato. Narumi nodded and ran to Naruto's room. While Minato and Kashina got up, smiled at their daughter antics. They both went to go the usual morning routine of bushing their teeth. After that they changed while Kashina went to the kitchen to prepare breakfast for the family and Minato reviewed what he was going to teach Naruto. Narumi ran through the halls and appeared in front of Naruto's room. She was scared to open it. She never has been inside Naruto's room before so she didn't know what was in there. Too scared to go inside she decided to knock instead hoping Naruto would answer. Aniki. Said Narumi while knocking on her brother's door. She got no answer and knocked once again only to have no answer once again. She put her head against the walls to hear any noise but heard nothing. Assuming that he wasn't there and still scared to go into his room, Narumi went to tell her parents. Narumi quickly went to the kitchen where both Minato and Kishina are. Kishina seeing the sad look on Narumi faced asked, what's wrong Narumi? Narumi looked at her and replied, Naruto isn't in his room. Shocking both, Minato and Kishina. Did you check his room? Asked Minato. Well I knocked and got no reply. I am scared to go into his room. Replied Narumi. Why are you scared? That's because I've never been into his room before and I'm scared Nikki will be mad at me. Minato and Kishina was surprised, they too have never been into Naruto's room and wondered what would be in there. Naruto seemed to be in there all the time, so they assumed there was something in there for him to do, but doesn't remember getting him anything that will allow him to stay in his room all day. How about we all go to Naruto's room then? Would you like that Narumi? Said Kishina, which Narumi nodded in reply. The three of them quickly went to Naruto's room and stopped when they are in front of Naruto's room. Slowly Minato opened the door to his room and when it opened all three of them were surprised. Naruto's room was what you would call plain, very plain. The walls were white, no dirty marks on it. Well his bed was neatly done showing that he was gone. His room was very clean even cleaner than Minato and Kishina. There wasn't a single clothes lying around anywhere. His clothes were neatly folded and the dirty ones in a basket at the side of his room. Narumi, Minato, and Kishina frowned at how plain his room was. Not a single decoration, on the walls. They looked around his room and noticed a bookcase. Filled with book, mostly advanced even Minato would have trouble reading some of the books on the shelves. The books were ranging from romance novels to history books, there were many kinds of different books. Naruto can read these books. Said a surprise Minato. Kishina and Narumi remained silent, amazed how smart Naruto was. After a minute or so of being surprised they looked around his room once more. They noticed something on his desk. It was a small stack of paintings and drawings that Naruto did. They looked through each one and were shocked at how much of an artist Naruto was. These paintings he did were almost as good as professional artists. The painting they saw were mostly about nature, but they were very beautiful. There was two painting in particular that caught all their eyes. The first one was a painting of four people. Two yellow hair male and two red hair female. You can obviously see that one male and female were children and the other two adults. All four of them seemed to be very happy. The three of them knew that the painting was about them and Naruto. Minato who was holding the painting, turned it around for Kishina and Narumi to see. They saw Naruto's signature and when he painted this. It said that he painted this when he was around six, but something shocked them. What shocked them though was the title of the painting. The title was called Family, after reading it Kishina and Narumi became sad, but quickly let it go. They were going to make it up to him that's a promise. They put the first painting down and looked at the second one that Kishina was currently holding. It was a painting of a blonde male looking over the scenery of nature. A lake covered by trees with mountains in the background. The man himself was standing on a cliff looking at the nature, so they couldn't see the face of the man. They thought it was beautiful probably one of Naruto's best painting. Kishina turned the painting around and noticed that it was recently painted. The painting was titled Rise from the Shadow they didn't understand what it meant. They continued to understand the meaning of the painting until they were interrupted by a knock on the door. They turned around and were surprised to see Naruto standing at the door to his room. His face denoyed. Can I help you? Said Naruto coldly. Kishina quickly put the painting down and replied, Sorry Naruto, we wanted to tell you to come down and eat breakfast, but you were gone, so we came to your room to check up on you, to see you gone. Also we wanted to tell you to get ready to visit the clan heads. Naruto nodded and replied, I understand, now would you please leave so I can change. The three Namikas quickly left his room and Naruto closed the door. He quickly changed into normal grey pants and a dark grey t-shirt, he threw his dirty clothes into his dirty laundry basket. 
When he was done getting ready he closed the door behind him, forgetting about the plan he left inside his dirty pants pocket. He went downstairs and ate breakfast with his family, and they left the house to walk around the village and clan houses. As they walked around the village to see how the festival preparation were coming, and it seemed that they were almost done. After the quick detour they went and visit the clan homes. Well to be more exact they all went to the Hyuga's homes, since they were invited to go there along with all the clan heads. At the Hyuga clan house, you could see Hinata and Ino talking with each other. Shikamaru, Chaoji, Kiba and Shino were two hanging around each other, well to be more exact Shikamaru was sleeping while Chaoji was eating chips, Kiba was petting his pet Akamaru, and Shino was silent or talking to bugs. The parents were looking at their children play while talking. There's was a knock on the door, and Hisashi the clan head answered it to see Minato and Kishina with their children. They could tell that Narumi couldn't wait to talk with her friend, and Naruto who well they couldn't tell his emotion. Hello Minato-san, nice of you to make it greeted Hiashi, who is a good friend of Minato. Yo Hiashi, how's it's going? Replied Minato. Minato looked around the house and noticed a clan certain arrogant clan head missing. Where Fugaku? He asked. Fugaku said something about not having time for childish things like get together. Replied Hiashi. Minato laughed dude got a stick up his ass that's for sure. Hiashi chuckled at his friend attitude. After quick greeting from the rest of the family Minato and Kishina went to the adults to talk about things. Kishina glanced back at her children and hoped that they were at least starting to get along. Narumi looked at Naruto determination in her eyes. Iniki would you like to play with me and my friends? Naruto looked at her like she was crazy, didn't what he say yesterday mean anything to her? He wanted to say no until in the corner of his eyes he saw Kishina looking at them hoping that they get along. Then something came into Naruto's mind and he mentally smirked. If I pretend to forgive them, then they'll probably get off my back about things, which will make it easier for me to escape. Thinking they have won so they wouldn't need to worry about me that much. He looked at Narumi's still determined face and nodded, sure that would be nice. Narumi quickly dragged Naruto to her friends which was Ino and Hinata, since they were the only girl there really, because it was a clan head family get together. As both Narumi and Naruto sat down, both Ino and Hinata greeted Narumi but was looking at Naruto. Naruto just shrugged it off and greeted both of them ignoring their looks. After a minute of awkwardness Ino, Hinata and Narumi talked like little gossip girls. Naruto groaned, closed his eyes and meditated as best as he could. Narumi saw this and frowned but understood that he didn't understand girl talk. All the clan heads was walking with each other and watching their children interact. Minato was currently talking with Hiashi, Shikaku, Choza, and Inoichi, while Kishina was talking with the wife of the clan heads, but really she was paying most of her attention to Naruto. She saw his eyes closed which she thought that he was sleeping, and it made her frown because he was interacting with anyone. It made her start to think that Naruto doesn't have any friends and was lonely his whole life, which made her even more sad. Since she was part of the reason why he was lonely, because she played favorites and neglected him over Narumi. Not listening to her motherly instinct instead, listening to Minato and her ninja self, something she now regretted. After two to three hours it was noon, and time for the Namaka's family had to leave, so that they could prepare for the party, and to see the festival preparation. During the clan visit, after Narumi finished her girl talk with Ino and Hinata. They tried to get to know Naruto better by asking him question, which he gave them answers and they started to talk. He pretended to enjoy being around his family. During the walk in the village, everyone greeted the Hokage and his family. While some secretly glared at Naruto, which he ignored. During the walk Kishina and Minato noticed that Naruto was talking with Narumi. It seems he forgives us both Kishina and Minato thought as they continue walking. After an hour Minato decided that it was time to go home so that they could prepare for the birthday party. When they reached inside the Namaka's home Kishina looked at her kids and said, why don't you two clean up and change for the party. Naruto and Narumi both nod and went to their rooms. Kishina went to change and cook for the party while Minato got the decoration ready. Luckily he put some Horatian seals around the house, which made it quicker for him to decorate. Narumi finished about an hour later and went to Naruto's room only to find him sleeping. She didn't want to bother him, so she closed the door and went to the living room to help her dad with the decoration. Hours later, time 6 p.m. It was 6 p.m. time for the party to begin. The Namaka's house was filled with friends, children, and adults. There were the clan heads and their family, here is Insuratobi the third Hokage and his family, Naruto and Narumi's godparents Jiraiya and Tsunade. There was also some Jonin shinobis who were close friend to Minato and Kishina, one of which was Kakashi, Kurinai, and Yugao who was once a student to Minato and Kishina. Narumi was currently talking with her friends which were Ino, Hinata, Sakura, Hanabi, and some girls in her class. There were also some guys that hanged with her like Shikamaru, Kiba, Kaoji, and Shino. Narumi though was not engaged into the conversation instead she was trying to find Naruto. 
Earlier when she finished helping her dad with the decoration, she waited for her brother to finish his nap. She waited for a while, but then the guests started coming, and quickly her friends assaulted her. Naruto himself was standing in the corner away from the crowd where no one can see him. He was currently observing the party watching everyone and how the party was progressing, so that he would know the right time to escape. About an hour has passed and he finished eating dinner and still observed the party as it progressed. He smirked when they started to take out the alcohol. Now all I have to do is wait till they're all drunk. He thought to himself. 30 minutes later most of the adults were drunk one including Minato, though he wasn't as drunk as the others. Naruto knew it was time for him to leave. He got up to go to his room until someone standing in front of him stopped him. He looked up to see Itachi with a smile. Hello Itachi-san. Greeted Naruto. Itachi still smiling replied hello Naruto, where are you going? Just to my room I'm a little tried so I need some rest. This early? Yes. Itachi only nodded and pulled a small box out of his pocket and gave it to Naruto. Your birthday present, added Itachi. Naruto took the box thanking Itachi and opened it. Inside was a scroll. Confused Naruto looked at Itachi who was still smiling at him. What is this? He asked still confused. Couple of Katen Jutsus I managed to copy from the Ichiha clan. But don't tell anyone. Replied Itachi. Naruto smiled, Itachi was like brother to him and also a teacher. He thanked Itachi, gave him a hug, and excused himself to go to his room. In his room he got this things ready and checked if he had everything he needed. In his backpack he has a few storage scroll holding food, cooking materials, and things for survival. He also brought kunais and shrunken for protection. Extra clothes consisting on two shirts one grey one black, one black combat pants, and undergarments. Lastly was the scroll that he received from Itachi. He packed his things and put on his backpack. Put on his shoes, opened the window and looked at his room once more before he would leave. Looking over at his table he saw a stack of his artwork. He saw two painting, the ones that his family was looking at earlier in the day. He picked one of the pictures up and put it in one of his scroll. After he pulled out a kunai sliced the other picture making it break and jumped out of the window when he finished. He was lucky the gate was open for incoming people that might be late to the party. He sneaked past a couple of drunken people and exited the gate. In the village Naruto could see many people still celebrating. Children playing the games and the festival, while the mother watch over them or talking to their friend. The men were mostly drunk from the many alcohol they drank. Naruto went through the festival, making sure no one saw him. He hated the fact that the house was on the opposite side of the village from the main gate. So it was going to take him forever to reach the main gate, since the other gates were closed for the ceremony to make sure that if there was an attack, they would have to come through the main gate. It already took him an hour to get the festival and only the beginning. It took him forever because he had to take long routes and make sure no one spotted him, not even the ambus. He sighed thinking about how much more distance he has left and the many people he would have to hide from in the festival. He inwardly groaned, this was going to take forever. Namaka's house, one hours after Naruto left. The time was nine, about an hour since Naruto left. The party doesn't seem to be getting smaller or tiring down, if anything it seems to be getting wilder. There were karaoke coming from the living room, with many more drunken adults singing, the children were running around the house. Minato, who was slightly drunk since he didn't drink much, quiet everyone down. Now then it is time for Narumi to open her presence. Said Minato when everyone quiet down and was listening to Minato. Narumi, who heard what her father said, smiled in happiness. For a while now she has been sad because she hasn't found Naruto. But the mention of present brought her out of her sad thoughts. The only thing in her mind at the moment was her present. First off was Jureya who walked up to Narumi with a giant scroll. Many people were wide eyes knowing what the scroll was. Swan though was fuming when she saw the scroll she wanted to give Narumi the summoning contract to the slug, but apparently Jureya beat her to it. Narumi I want to give you the toad summoning contact. Said Jureya. Narumi eyes widened she knew what the toad summoning from what her father told her and also wanted to summon toads like her father. Narumi started to jump in glee. Jureya chuckled while everyone laughed. Now sign here with your blood. Said Jureya pointing to the blank space next to Minato's name. Narumi bit her thumb so blood could come out, then she wrote her name the best she could. After it was done Jureya closed the scroll, and Minato came up to Narumi telling her that she will have extra training, so that she could summon the toads. After she opened all the presents, which consist of clothes, toys, and things from her friends and clan heads. Her mother though got her a wooden katana and said that she will be teaching her in the family kinjutsu style, which got Narumi happy. Minato gave her some of his special kunais and said he will start preparing her for the more advanced stuff of his training. Makoto who was watching the gifts frowned. Speaking of Makoto, since the party started she has been looking for Naruto, but failed. She wanted to give Naruto a present of her own, which was a fox costume she thought would look really cute on Naruto, and a black trench coat. 
She asked her son Itachi to help her find him, which he did. When Itachi came back she asked him where Naruto was and he told her that he was sleeping. She told herself that she would give Naruto present later, after Narumi finishes opening her presents and the party started once again. When she finished opening all her presents, which took about an hour because of her enormous pile of presents, everyone was about to go back to his or her own business when they heard a voice. Where's Naruto on each chan Asked Narumi, which everyone stopped what they're doing and leoked around confused. They all forgot about Minato and Kishina's second child, the blonde boy with whisker mark who always seemed quiet. Minato and Kishina was a little worried because they haven't seen Naruto during the party either and hoped that he was fine. Kurinai, Yugao, and Anko who were also at the party were also worried for their friend, who they see as a younger brother. After saving Naruto, the three of them talked to Naruto and tried to get to know him. As time went by they got close to each other, the three girls see him as a younger brother who they will protect no matter what. Don't worry about Naruto he went to his room to sleep. Said Minato, who had just been informed by Itachi. Everyone nodded and went back to their things. Narumi frowned, her plan was ruined, but she didn't want to bother Naruto either. She sighed and went back to her friends. When Nakoto saw everyone going back to party, she slipped away from the party to give Naruto her present and maybe get to see how cute Naruto's sleeping form would look like so she can tease him about it. When she reached Naruto's room, she pressed her ears against the door to hear if Naruto made any sound while he slept. Wow Naruto-kun is a silent sleeper Makoto thought to herself when she heard nothing, unlike her husband Fugaku who snores really loud and grumbles something about Ichiha being the best, man that guy never stops being arrogant. She opened the door quietly and looked around the room. The only light was from the moon. She found the light switch and quickly switched it so the light would turn on. She looked around the now light room and was shocked to not see Naruto frown. She thought that he probably went to the restroom or something so she waited, might as well give Naruto his present while he was awake. While waiting Makoto looked around his room and saw the basket holding Naruto's dirty laundry. When she looked inside she saw a piece of paper slightly hanging out of one of Naruto's pant pocket. Curious, she pulled the paper out and read it. She gasped and dropped the box which holds Naruto's present. She quickly ran out of the room and back to the party, looking for Kishina and Minato. She quickly found Kishina and Minato, who were in a group talking with some of the clan heads. She quickly ran to them. Minato and Kishina saw Makoto coming up into the group slightly panting with fear and worry written all over her face. What's wrong Makoto? Asked Minato. It's Naruto replied Makoto who didn't get to finish when Kishina interrupted her. What about Naruto-kun? Kishina interrupted. Naruto is leaving the village. She shouted loudly that the whole party heard and stopped what they were doing to look at Makoto. Kishina and Minato were shocked to hear this. What do you mean leaving the village? Asked Minato loudly. I went to Naruto's room to give him my present. I didn't find Naruto sleeping instead I found this sheet of paper hanging out of one of Naruto's pants. Mikoto gave both Kishina and Minato the sheet of paper she found. Minato and Kishina quickly took it and read what it said. Their eyes widened when they finished. Kishina broke down crying, he didn't forgive us, she said while sobbing. Narumi who heard what Mikoto said, went up to her parents hoping what she heard was false. Do San is Ani San really gone? She asked wearily. Minato looked at her daughter, she looked into her eyes and saw fear. Fear that what she heard was true. Minato didn't want to answer her so he turned away. Narumi saw what her father did and somewhat understood what it meant and broke down crying herself. Minato himself felt even worse, he re-looked over the plan and noticed that there might be a chance to get his son back. Anbu? Shouted Minato. Then some Anbu appeared in front of Minato kneeling. What is it Hokage-sama? Said an Anbu wearing a bear mask. Find my son Naruto and make sure he doesn't reach the main gate. Why Hokage-sama? Because Naruto is planning on leaving Konoha and I will not lose my son. Shouted Minato getting angry that the Anbu has not left yet. The Anbu quickly left, doing what they are told. Minato himself was preparing to leave when he was stopped by a couple of Jonin, Jureya, Kakshi, the clan heads excluding Fugaku, who thought that the demon brat should just leave which got a glare from Kishina, while inwardly she was confused demon brat. Naruto isn't a demon. Minutes later everyone was ready including Kishina. Minato looked shocked to see Kishina. What are you doing Kishina? Asked Minato. Helping to look for Naruto what else? She replied getting annoyed of why they haven't left yet and Minato questioning something like this. No you can't, you have to stay and watch the children. Don't worry I will bring Naruto back with that Minato left, leaving an angry Kishina before she could say anything. Bakodo who was there went up to her longtime friend. Go find Naruto, I'll stay and watch the kids. She told Kishina. Thank you Makoto-chan Kishina replied and started to leave. You better bring Naruto back. Makoto shouted so Kishina could hear. I will. Replied Kishina, with that she disappeared via Shunshin. Outside Konoha. 
Naruto finally got outside of Konoha, though it took forever. He easily got past the guards at the gate, since they were knocked out from drinking too much. He signed to himself, it took him forever to get here after dodging people and making sure not to be spotted. He was lucky the festival pretty much reached all the way to the main gate. Finally out of the village. Said Naruto with relief. Still you shouldn't relax yet, you're still in Konoha territory. Yoko told Nordo sounding slightly tired. Yoko was right even though he was right outside of Konoha, it didn't mean he should relax, since he was still in Konoha territory. He inwardly nodded to Yoko, but noticed that when she talked she sounded a little weary and tired, he wanted to ask her what was wrong, but felt chakra signals that brought him out of his current thought. He cursed to himself when he sensed that they were all Jonin into Anbu level shinobi. Quickly he hid himself behind a tree and tried his best to conceal his chakra, hoping no one incense him. After waiting for a while he saw a few Jonin pass by him. When there was no one left he got out of his hiding spot and began running again, only to stop when he noticed about three people waiting for him. He cursed to himself since he knew now that his plan was going to fail. In front of him stood Kakashi, Jiraiya, and Itachi. Naruto stopped a few yards away from them, staring at them with impassive eyes. Naruto you need to come home. Said Jiraiya. Naruto glared at Jiraiya and Kakashi two people he didn't really care for, since they both were somehow related to his father. One being his teacher while the other being his student. But both were both strong something he respected about them. A little. Why would I do that? Growled Naruto. That's because your father, mother and sister want you back home. Sensei, Kishina Nisan, and Narumi-chan wants you home, so you all can be a family again. Said Kakashi jumping into the conversation hoping to change Naruto's mind about leaving. He frowned when Naruto's face didn't lighten up, if anything it was even madder than before. Naruto now glared at Kakashi and replied, since when have I been considered family? I was never considered family to them. I was neglected and ignored for what? Only because Narumi contains the QP's chakra. Making both Kakashi and Jiraiya both flinch. Naruto seeing both Jiraiya and Kakashi flinch tried to run, but stopped when he saw them also move. Naruto examined them and noticed that Jiraiya and Kakashi stood in front while Itachi stood a few yards back. Seconds later Naruto felt more chakra signal he mentally cured to himself. He didn't want his plan to fail, all that planning for what? Only to fail, no he will not allow that. He had to think of something, anything quickly. Then something came into his mind he only hoped that it would work. Heading into a stance with his arms crossed in an X formation, Blue Chakra began to cover around him. Kakashi, Jirei were confused but got into a fighting stance. Gravity Seal Kai. Release, said Naruto, making both Kakashi and Jirei eyes widen in shock Naruto knows Fuinjutsu. They both thought. Naruto saw the shocked look and used it as a cue to dash off, passing both Kakashi and Jirei. Kakashi and Jirei who were still shocked, saw Naruto make a fun for it, but they were late to react, and the speed they saw him made them even more shocked he's fast they both thought. It wasn't that Naruto was faster than them or anything it's was just that Naruto was really fast for his age, even faster than them when they were his age. Though Kakahi was fast, his fastest being around low chunin speed, Naruto was at least mid chunin to high chunin speed. Naruto smiled and continued to run into the forest. In matter of seconds he was gone from Jiraiya and Kakashi, but he went off road so it would be harder for them to find him. While running he felt like he forgot something or someone. When he remembered he cursed to himself because the person he forgot was standing in front of him. Itachi. During the interaction between Naruto and the two shinobi, Itachi stood behind watching Naruto. When Naruto made a dash for it, he followed him and hid his chakra to sneak in front of Naruto. Now he stood in front of Naruto with conflicting feelings. Truthfully he hated the villagers for beating Naruto someone he saw as a younger brother, though he had Sasuke, the guy was like his father, someone he disliked greatly. He knew that the marriage between his parents was arranged, but would it kill him to show some affection to his wife. He barely talks to her and would treat her like a toy or a housemaid. Also the way he interacted with people, if they weren't an Achiha he would think lowly of them. Sure the Achiha has the Sharingan, but it wasn't like the strongest Dejutsu, and it had its drawbacks too. He tried to change Sasuke, but Sasuke had adapted to his father personality and remained unchanging. Itachi Nai please let me go. Pleaded Naruto. Itachi looked into Naruto's eyes and saw his eyes sad and pleading. Itachi a Konoha shinobi must follow the order of the Hokage, but he didn't want to see Naruto suffer. But how will survive? It's really dangerous outside the village. Asked Itachi. I read a few book on survival, and if someone attacks I can try my best to hold them up and make a run for it. I mean I did hit you a few times during our spars. Replied Naruto. Itachi looked into Naruto's eyes and saw that he won't change his mind. He really didn't want Naruto to live, but if can take care of himself, then he guessed it was okay. Itachi sighed and reached into his pocket and pulled out a special kunace. 
Naruto immediately knew that it was his father, Minato's kunais that he uses for his jutsu called the Horation, Flying Thunder God technique. Use this Naruto-kun when you get into serious trouble said Itachi seriously. Naruto reluctantly nodded, took the kunai, and put it in his pocket. Thank you Itachi Nai said Naruto as he gave Itachi a hug which Itachi returned. Now go Naruto before the other find you. Said Itachi. Naruto nodded and dashed off. Minutes after Kakashi and Jiraiya came. Itachi did you see Naruto? Asked Jiraiya. No I haven't I think he went the other way though. We must hurry before we lose him. Replied Itachi, pointing to a different direction. Kakashi and Jiraiya nodded and all three of them followed the direction Itachi pointed to. Naruto himself was glad that Itachi let him go, sure he was young, but he knew how to defend himself, he could give Lo to Midchunin a run for their money. He made a mental note that he owed Itachi later on in the future. As he continued running, a red blur passed by him and stopped a few feet in front of him, making him stop. Naruto now saw who was in front of him glared at the person. For the person in front of him was his mother Kashina Yuzumaki Namikas. She wore her battle gear, but without her katana since she had to rush. How Kashina found Naruto was rather difficult when she started looking she thought that he was probably in the forest of Hai no Kuni, fire country, already, so she dashed her way to the forest. When she got there she started looking but noticed Itachi. She asked him if he had found which he answered no, and they went their separate ways. It was only luck that she found him, because of footsteps she heard like someone was running. She followed the sound and shortly after she found her son. Naruto why are you leaving? Is it because of us? If so then we will make it up to you, Kishina asked Naruto sadly hoping to change Naruto's mind about leaving. Please you had your chance years ago. I've even tried to become a family by suggesting going to places, but what happened? Oh that's right my suggestions were overruled by Narumi. Yelled Naruto his anger getting the best of him. He wasn't done yet, he was by far from done, since he was leaving anyways might as well tell her everything not like she care anyways. I've always tried to do anything to become a family, but every time, you ignore me, always choosing Narumi over me. I stop trying because I know what will happen, he continued, making Kashina sadder than before. But that doesn't mean you should leave. We can make it up to you. Responded Kashina after finishing her flashbacks. Like I said you lost your chances about two years ago. You neglected and ignored me over Narumi for what? All because she holds the QP's powers. But she had to be trained to control the QB's power, also Minato-kun said so, and he knows what is best. Naruto was getting more furious when his mother mentioned about Minato. So what? That doesn't mean you have to neglect me, you could have always gave me books on chakra or maybe the basic anything. But no. You just shoo me like I'm some kind of fly and told me to go to my room, telling me I'll be trained when I'm ready. And don't talk about that bastard Minato in front of me. Hey don't talk to your father like that. Yelled Kishina. The bastard isn't my father more like a overconfident fool. If he was so great then he should have known that it is going to be impossible for Narumi to control the QB's chakra. What do you mean impossible? Asked Kashina confused. You were a Jinchuriki yourself, you should know. Without the soul, all the power is just a mass of destruction, hatred, and madness. Narumi cannot control that. For Narumi to control the power she needs the soul, which is sealed inside me. The soul and power must coexist with each other like yin and yang, light and dark. How else were you able to control the QP's power? How do you know all this stuff? It doesn't matter, now move so I can leave this retarded village. Don't talk about your home like that. That place isn't my home. It's more like a hell. Shouted Naruto, shocking Kashina. How? Kashina was confused, was ignoring Naruto really that bad. What do you mean how? You know how. No, I don't. Really now? So you don't know that I get beat almost every other day of my life. Making Kashina shocked to her core. Naruto was getting beat up. By who? For what reason? Who did that to you? Naruto was getting irritated. What does she mean, who did it to him, and she knew the answer. You know who did it. Why ask? Now Kashina was shocked, she didn't know who it was, nor did she know that Naruto was getting beat up and being called demon in the first place. No, I don't. You mean to tell me that you don't know a bunch of villagers beat me up? What? Why would they do that? That's because they think I'm a demon. Kashina was confused demon. She thought to herself. Why would they think you are a demon? Are you kidding me you don't know? That because since I hold the QB soul, they think that the QB influences me. So they think I'm the QB and would beat me up. Naruto stopped to take a deep breath, he was mad, his face red with anger. Kishina on the other hand was taking this in slowly, but eventually her eyes started to swell with tears coming out. And you want to know what's funny? Added Naruto, Kishina looked up at him wondering what it might be. That bastard Minato allowed them to beat me up, using me as a scapegoat for their pain and loss from the QP attack. Yes Naruto knew, it didn't really take a genius to figure it out. 
since he remembered seeing constant familiar faces during his beatings. He guessed that the fool must have let them free from prison and charges. He also found out when he went to the Hokagarum to confirm his thoughts. When he saw a Lee civilian from prison signed. Ashina froze when she heard that Minato allowed her son beatings. She didn't know what to believe. She had trusted her husband believing that he always knew what to do. But after hearing what Naruto just told her she didn't know anymore. Right now, I cannot forget what happened to me, the pain is too much I can't handle it. Said Naruto, Kishina brought out of her current thought and started thinking about what has happened to Naruto. She was thinking about everything Naruto had told her. She started having flashbacks of all the events with Naruto. She remembered the times when Naruto would suggest things only for Narumi to say something else, how Minato along with her to agree with Narumi. She remembered the time Naruto asked to be trained only for Minato and her to tell him to go to his room. Truthfully she could have done something to Naruto, but instead she listened to Minato and told Naruto that he would be trained when ready. Going through these flashbacks she felt like an idiot, like a fangirl. After Minato was saved the village from the QP attack, he was seen as a hero. After that Kashina thinking Minato was the strongest shinobi ever, followed him like a fangirl, never questioning anything he said nor done. Thinking what he says or does it the right thing. Now she didn't know what to think she wanted to believe what Naruto said was false, about the beatings and Minato all of it false. She kept on thinking while Naruto kept on talking. She didn't hear a single thing of what Naruto said as she kept on thinking. When she got back to her senses she was too late because the last thing she heard from Naruto was goodbye Kasan and left off. Leaving at Tiri Kishina who broke down crying not having the willpower to chase after him. Naruto has finally escaped and will not to be heard from Konoha for many years. That's it for today guys, thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you do please leave a like, share and subscribe. Also don't forget to stay hydrated. Take care.